Hi everyone, my name's Mike and welcome to the channel. Well, what can I say? Um, we were absolutely blown away by the attendance to the bike meet on Sunday. Um, we didn't expect so many people to turn up. It was just fantastic. Um, and the variety and the quality of bikes that turned up was, we, we, we were just so happy to see it. You know, we, we had bikes from the 40s right through and we had Japanese bikes, Italian bikes, Brit bikes. It, it was just wonderful. And it was great to meet you guys. The, the, the depth of knowledge that you've got and the passion and enthusiasm you've got for these bikes, it, it, it really validates what we're trying to do in terms of making these videos because we know there's an audience there and we know that there's a people that want to be involved and 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 can feed back to us so it's it's just fantastic um but most importantly thank you so much for your donations um that was the purpose of the day um we've made a decent amount of money um i won't release a figure uh, because what i'm going to do is make sure all the money's coming in because we've still got a Just Giving page which I'll put a clickable link to in the description um, and there's also Paul who is a photographer who um, he, he takes photographs from the roundabout when you come in and uh, he was there on the day uh, photographing people arriving and leaving um, so he has a website that he publishes the photographs to and you can go and purchase the photograph if you'd like so I encourage you to um, go and have a look and see if there's a photo of yourself and if if you wish to buy it off Paul because what he's promised is that 50 percent of all proceeds that he made on the day will go to the Ukraine charity which is really kind of him. Um, I'd also like to thank Jeanette who is the proprietor of the Midway Cafe. Um, you may have noticed she put some bunting up for the Ukraine and she really got on board and she didn't charge us anything. She, she was involved in the organization, did quite a bit of work helping us with this. Um, she also sold lemon drizzle cake for us, which was great. Also, the other cafes were selling the lemon drizzle cake as well. So thank you very much. And thanks, big thanks to Jeanette for that. We really appreciate it. Um, so one of the highlights for me was uh, a lady called Irena turned up. And Irena is a lady from the Ukraine who has had to leave her home um, for obvious reasons. And she's been taken in by a family in Molpus. So they all came down and to, ha to have a look at what we were doing. And Irena doesn't speak English, but she had two words that she could speak in English and they were thank you. And she was saying thank you, not to us, but to everyone who has helped her and her people in, in in their time of need so that was quite emotional and it was it gave validation to what to what we, we were doing on the day so that was absolutely lovely um also th thank you to everyone that i interviewed on the day i know it can be daunting if someone comes up to you and shoves a microphone under your nose but everyone was very gracious and gave great interviews so i really thank you for that and um, a big thanks to Andy who brought his race bikes and, and kindly fired them up. The Rob North Triple was just glorious. I think that's one of the best sounding bikes ever made. That Just fantastic. And when he fired up the Drixton Honda, I thought it was Armageddon. It was just so loud. Uh, it sounded great. Um, just wonderful. So thanks Andy for that. Um, also, we may have a bit of a project going with Andy next year. Um, we're very early stages of discussion, but we may be covering one of his race meetings and we may be covering one of his race meetings in the Isle of Man. So I'm very excited about that and um, keep watching because I'm, I'm sure something really good's gonna come out of that. So uh, looking forward to working with you, Andy, more, more on that. So. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. A lot of people said that we can um, use their bikes in up and coming episodes. So stay watching us, uh, the usual like and subscribe. And once again, thank you so much. Uh, it was just a joyous day for us all. And it was great to meet you all. And it's just fantastic. And with that, 
on with the show. Take my glasses off. Yeah, this is Steve, yeah. who's yeah. featured on one of our previous videos. I think the Marini one you were on. Yeah, that's you? right. And they had the grand, had the grand passer. Grand passer. That's yeah. right. That was a really good day out. Like yeah, this, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So Steve's brought along this magnificent bike. This is probably my all-time favourite bike. Do you yeah, to, mine too. Do you mine too. Yeah, yeah, tell is, us yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah um, well, basically, it's a 1979 900 SS, um, proper one. Um, yeah, I bought it uh, 1999, 2000, um, rode it around for a little while um, and um, had a few engine issues with it and so literally then, because they weren't that worth, they weren't worth what they are now, yeah, yeah. but they're still a very desirable bike. Um, I found the riding position quite difficult and, uh, you know, and one thing and another it, it sort of went to the back of the shed yeah. I, I know it's hard to believe something like this yes. you would do that but you've got a few bikes haven't you i have yeah yeah, yeah I have. <laughs> but it, it actually went to the back of the shed and I, but i was always wanted to do it properly and um, by that i mean engine out split the cases you know pull the crank apart you've got to clean clean out the sludge trap on these yeah. um, and um, and then I had a load of Kajiva elephants and other Ducatis and 888 SP3s and, and then so about uh, about 10 years ago I started again properly I thought right because it actually originally had um, mag wheels on it uh, and they were the um, um, FPS's all right yeah because uh, originally in 79 it would have been black and gold yes yes of course don't they uh, they've got a reputation for cracking haven't they those yeah, Magwins. well, they're, they're the um, no, the um, they're the speed line mag oh. mag magnesiums, yeah. and also um, Campagnolo do uh, uh, mag magnesium. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted the wires because when I was into bikes, first got into bikes in the early 70s, um, you see pictures of 1975, 900 SS, it was blue and silver, it was this bike, and it had wire wheels, yeah. and it was, wow, it, you know, they were expensive, it was a dream. Yeah. So here I am now, uh, at the other end of my life, yes. <laughs> and I got the dream, yeah. you know, um, and, and it, it, so so it was about really really trying to sort of recreate that bike. You, um, you, you post the bike, yeah, it yeah. is, it is. Yeah. Post, yeah, some people have RD four hundreds or yeah. whatever floats your or three fifties or whatever yes. floats your boat, but this for me is. Yeah, it is my favourite motorbike. I'm looking at it now, and I can't. It's the first time it's been out, you know. Yeah. In first time it's been out in 20 years. Let's hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a beautiful. Well, thing. I went. To, I went to Scotland in uh, 2001. We rode up to Thurso, and that was the last big trip yeah. in 2001. You but, rode to Scotland on this? Yeah, 1,500 miles. Wow. There and back. No, it's, it's okay. Well, I was. Oh, oh once, you, once you're once you going as well. well yeah, but it's dead wind. smooth. That's yeah. the thing about these is yeah. you've got a, a good, honest 65 bhp at the yeah. back wheel, but they're dead smooth. Yeah. You wind them up to, I don't know, four, five, five, yeah. about 5,000 is about 90. Yeah. And they're just beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, so, so, so they are actually, once you're moving, you get tucked in behind the fairing, you get used to the riding position. They are, believe it or not, really comfortable bikes. Yes. Um, it's when you come into town, it's when you see a set of traffic lights or two or three sets of traffic lights, then you're basically, you've got to keep the motor running. You don't want it to die because it's only Kickstarter. You know, they, they're very heavy. They're very long. The clutch is a nightmare. Just feel the clutch. Oh, that yeah. is heavy. It's a man's clutch. Yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, so I believe, um, we're going to video the first startup of this well, hopefully, eventually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, I'm hoping to. It just needs a bit of wiring doing, but the motor's done, the carbs in. It, it, it's pretty much. You could almost put petrol in it. Really, yeah. you're only a, a few days away. Yeah. Um, but when I do, I'll invite you over. Yeah, fantastic. I'll invite you over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll we'll come and give it a fire up. I'll yeah. make sure I've got a spark on both plugs. Yes. So that I'm not wasting your time. Yeah, that's brilliant. And then we'll we'll give it a. There'll be clouds of smoke. And yeah. Fantastic, I really um, look yeah, forward to that. Well, thanks oh, very much. Yeah, well. thank you. It's thank you. Thank you for bringing this along. Well, it's been a fabulous and, uh, day. Yeah. Thank All you. right, cheers. cheers. Hi, 
So we're here at the um, Lemon Drizzle Gang Classic Day and we've got Andy who is a TT rider and he's been kind enough to bring along a couple of his bikes and uh, he's brought the Drixton Honda so would you mind giving us a, a, a overview of your bike and just letting us know? Yeah, it's a 1972 Honda CB450 known as the Black Bomber when it first came out. Oh, okay, yeah. The first double O red cam production bike as a road bike yep. came out I think 65 uh, and it was so good that the ACU banned it from production racing oh, right. they said it was actually a race bike on the road so uh, so uh, you bought what year was the bike that you it bought was, it was a 72, 72 an import from the States uh, but it was a wreck it had been stood outside for, for years it was just a rusty wreck basically uh, so but all I wanted was the engine to build this, which is a Drixton, Drixton frame. Uh, so who are Drixton? Where are they? Drixton is an amalgamation. I think it was Marty Drixton and Sid Lawton back in the 60s who built the, the frame for an Air Mackey originally. And then they started putting the Honda engines in and Asa Moise was building. Oh them. yeah, I remember Asa yeah, Moise. Yeah. Uh, trading as Bartel engineer and he was building them in uh, in Northern Ireland, yeah. where I think he's retired recently. So the, the, the vast majority of Drixton frames you see now, certainly with the Honda engines in, were built by Acer. Uh, so this is the one of the last frame kits he built. Uh, I got it as a kit and, and built it up myself. Uh, and how long has it taken you to build up? Not very long. The, the, it probably took longer to source all the parts uh, because it's, it's deviated from standard uh, internally, the engine. It's a close ratio gearbox, it's a six spring clutch on it, uh, it's got arrow con rods, mega cycle cams, it's a valve spring, it's a coil valve spring conversion. Oh, okay, the, the torsion. Instead of torsion bars, yeah. Uh, a lot of work gone into it, and I've sourced parts from all over the world you yeah. know, to try and uh, to get the best. Uh, so when I started building, probably only six months to get it up and running. But then, of course, with COVID coming along, it's, I've not had a chance to ride it yet. So what sort of horsepower? Because I know they're about 48 horsepower, yeah, aren't they, it's standard? 65. Uh, I've not dynoed it yet, but I would be looking to get 65 out of it, probably. Uh, and obviously, it's a lot lighter than the standard road-going bike. Uh, so it should be competitive, you know, in the 500. Yeah, but bet it rides beautifully. You haven't, yeah. you haven't ridden it yet, obviously. No, not, not, turn, not turn the wheel. Noisy Libertas. Yeah. <laughs> Can't compete against the Liberta for no. noise. I used to have one of them as well yeah. years ago. I, r I rode up on that one, that orange one. Oh, right, right. Lovely oh, that's bike. that's yeah. beautiful, yeah. Cool, all right. Well, thank you very much for that. So, you, you, you're planning to race it next year or so? Probably next year, I'll be back at the classic pre, at the pre TT Classic at yeah. the Alaman on the 700 circuit. Uh, that's, you know. That's what I built it for, really, and the, the classic TT yeah. itself. Uh, Fantastic. All right, well, I think we're going to fire them up a bit later. It up. It'll yeah. take a while to get it warm before I start putting some revs into it. Yeah. But, uh, but it's also running on Castro R, so it smells oh, nice lovely. as well. Yeah. All right, thank you very thank you. much. It's loud. It's oh, great. I'm just waiting for the paint to come back there.
fantastic. So it's, it's certainly not quiet, is it? It's not quiet. Uh, so I haven't ridden it yet. I would love to get it at full chat, you know. Yeah. And, so could you take it somewhere like Alton Park, or would no, it just blow the noise? No. Yeah. I'd read to think what well, sound limits coming out. I think it's 105 limits yeah. on short circuits. That's probably cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Back. And uh, then we're going to do the try. We'll do the try. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so we've got Andy's second bike, uh, which is a Rob North Triple, I believe. It is. It's a 1971 T150 Triumph 750 Triple in a Rob North frame. It's a replica of the 72 Works bikes as ridden by Tony Jeffries and Ray Pickerel. Oh, right. Yeah. And what's of all, as John Cooper rode the BSA version, yeah. the Rocket 3 version. So is this, was it in the States, Dick Mann and people yes. like yeah, that? Yes, Dick yeah. Mann won Daytona on one, yeah. I believe, in 71. They went in 70, didn't win, but they won in 71 and won lots of other races as well so, yeah. with, the, uh, with the Rob North frames. Uh, I first saw one, I was about 13, going around Oliver's Mount at Scarborough, and I wanted one since then. You yeah, know. That, I think they're the best sounding bikes oh, ever. Yeah. They're just awesome. Yeah. Nothing sounds better than a triple, whatever it is, but these yeah. Rob North triples. Uh, and the beauty is that the Isle of Man, the pre -TT Classic and the Classic TT, there's no silencing, there's no noise limits, yeah. so they can run exactly as they were back in the day. Yeah. So that's a Belown circuit? That's a Belown circuit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, there's a great uh, video that you've put up of you on board and the set up going around Belown and it's fantastic sound. Yeah, I've got, a, I think I've two or three up at Belown uh, on, on this bike. I've also got a, sh a very short one in practice for the 2016 Classic Superbike TT. But unfortunately, it sees the big end going through Crosby, absolutely flat through Crosby and Glenvine, and it, it locked. Yeah, there. Bella, that was a bit scary. It, was, it gave some notice, to be honest. It started slowing down. I was going down Bray Hill, and I thought, it ain't pulling the revs it should do down here. And then going up the hill towards Balagheri, it just wasn't putting the speed on. And as I came out of Balagheri, it started to just sort of slow down then so, thought, so you got some warning so I whipped the clutch and it just went bang yeah. I, I used to race RDs back in the day yeah. and when they when they went they just yeah. went yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I crashed a, a TZ350 at Mallory in 1979 and that locked up going to the Lake Essence and like yeah. I said not a cat in hell's chance of saving that just banging it down you know Fantastic, so has it had engine mods this one? Oh yeah fully modified uh, again bought it as a donor bike non-runner Basically all that's left is the crankcases. Uh, course ratio gearbox again. The head's been done by Richard Peckett at p and It's a P&M belt drive on it. I ran it for a few years with a standard chain primary drive. Well, just a bit wary of it breaking. If they break, they do a hell of a lot of damage yeah. and they can bring you off. If a belt breaks, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, right. it's, it's got... All right, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for, for bringing them. And uh, again, we're going to fire them off in a minute. Well, yeah. yeah, great. Thank you very much
<laughs> Fantastic, thank you for that. That's the best sounding bike, I reckon. Absolutely. Yeah, what's it like to ride? Do you get all the sound yeah. as you're riding yeah. it? You know, even with the earplugs in and a good fitting helmet, you can still hear that noise. Yeah, even at 140 mile an hour, it's yeah. still bellowing beneath you. It's, it's wonderful. Well, but it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I hope you do more videos, onboard videos. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. will do, Mike. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for bringing your bikes along and uh, letting us have a chat to you. Yeah. So, lovely. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you, Mike. Cheers. Okay, so we've got Peter here, who's brought this magnificent Vincent. Is it a Comet? It's a Vincent Comet engine, but the top end's a 600cc conversion. Oh, okay. A guy called Terry Prince is in yep. Australia who makes them. And it's 10 and a half to one compression. It's got squish pan cylinder head and bigger valves and yeah, different ports yeah. and all that sort of thing. So Fantastic. it goes a bit better than the standard Yeah, and Comet. what frame is it? Mm. <laughs> the Vincent frame's an oil tank that goes on top, yes. on top of the engine, yes. so it's got that. Yeah. And then everything from the back I've had to make myself, basically. Oh, really? And all of the obviously the, these bits are made out of fiberglass. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic job. So are the, the guys in Australia, are they the guys who are involved in the Irving Vincent? No, not quite. Not There's them. a lot of people in Australia doing yeah. Vincent things, actually. But yeah. Terry, Vince is, is quite well known in Vincent terms. Yeah. He used to race them and uh, did drag racing and that sort oh, of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. All right, well, thank you very much for bringing it along and thanks for letting me have a chat with you. It's a wonderful machine. So, it works uh, okay. Yeah, it's but got it's a Triumph gearbox as well rather than the. Oh, the right, box, yeah. So, it's got five so what's it go like? A lot quicker right. than the standard comic. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot yeah. quicker. Well, it's not quick by modern standards. No, no. Well, it's, mile, yeah. it's up to under mile an hour quite easily. I've yeah. not really had it flat out as yet. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, Great. You, handles, you never know till you, till you try them, do you? Yeah, it work, exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, thank Cheers. you very much All for right, that. Thanks. Cheers. So uh, we have John here who's brought this lovely 504 Honda uh, and I believe you're going to very kindly let us be one of our future bikes that we're going to yeah, include in the series. Yeah, it'd be a great pleasure. Yeah, people can then appreciate the 500. Yeah. It's a little overshadowed by the bigger 750 and the slightly more popular 400. But it seems a sweet spot, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. It's uh, the right sort of weight. It handles sweetly. It's quick enough to get anybody in trouble. Yeah. And it goes as reliable as anything. I think styling-wise, it's probably my favourite. I just love those exhausts. Yep, yep. You know, like the, are they the original exhausts? They're not the original. They've only been on 30 years. Oh, right, OK. So, you know, uh, I've <laughs> so had... So, what, the, is this 74, would this be? Yes, made 73, registered 74. Yeah. Um... <laughs> When I bought it from a good friend of mine, in seven, I've had it since 77. Yeah. And uh, he had a, the obligatory four into one on there. Oh, because yeah. Because they used yeah. to corrode. Yes. Uh, I splashed out in about 1992 for yeah. a set of originals, and these are still there. Wow. Don't look too close, because well, they're in a bit, they're, they're a bit corroded. Yeah, but they look pretty good, and it looks it's lovely to see one. As you say, most people have got four into ones on them. Yeah. But. Yeah. But it's lovely. I did my first hundred mile an hour yeah. on a private road, of course. Of course. On the back of a 504. Yeah, yeah. Which was uh, fantastic. It was one of my, one of my brother's friends. Yeah, yeah. When I, I would have been about 14 yeah. at the time, and I yeah, yeah. Here we are, all these years later. <laughs> That's right. There's quite a few uh, photographs on the internet of a guy called Mike Halewood. Oh, with yeah. riding one of these with various passengers yeah, on the back. Yeah, he's got one with Agostini on the back, yeah, hasn't he? Yeah, uh, Provini as yeah. well, I think, and also James Hunt. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. yeah. The two likely lads. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, John. You're very welcome. And um, we'll be in touch, and uh, we'll certainly take you up on the offer of uh, 
doing some, you know, filming of you riding Bast and all that. And You're we'll, welcome. We'll do an episode on it because yeah. we've got a 750 Just, Ford yeah. Yeah. happening. So, yeah, okay. all right. It Thank might, might be nice to put the 750 and 500 together. Yeah, it might be. That would be a good idea to put them together. Yeah. Brilliant. Look after yourself. All right. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. Okay, so this is Keith, uh, and you're from Biker Down? Yeah, Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service and yep. uh, Biker Down course. So yeah. what, what do you do? Uh, basically, even the fire service, we've also got a, um, a, a remit to reduce road casualties and um, accidents, especially to motorcyclists. Yeah. So what we do, we do a free course, a completely free charge, four hours on a Sunday, once a month, okay. and we get up to 30 to 50 people. Yep. Uh, we go through three various things. One, why car drivers and other people, road users, can't see bikes and the physical reasons why they don't see you. Yeah. How you can counteract that to your own advantage so that you reduce the risk of an accident. Yeah. Uh, we also got how you manage an accident scene if you're out with some friends on a run and one of them comes off or you yeah. come across somebody. And then more importantly, um, a couple of hours of trauma aid by delivered by a doctor yes uh, on how to keep somebody alive yeah. until the emergency services can get to him yes fantastic uh, one in five people who have a trauma accident die because their airways blocked yeah. and it only takes four fingers and the tilt of the head to, to fix that but yeah. people yeah. don't know how to get in yeah okay. and also how to remove a helmet from an unconscious yes. person what have you so it's a really worthwhile course. Yeah, absolutely. And so whereabouts do you hold these? Well, we hold them at headquarters in Winsford. Okay, yeah. At yeah. fire headquarters on Sadler Road. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes we run them at um, a place called Safety Central, which is at the crossroads of the M56 and the M6 yeah. at Lim, yeah. just by Lim Services. So do you have to register? Is there an email address? Or uh, there's website? an email address and just a phone call or yeah. just on, just Google on the, you know, on, on the internet. So you just Google Biker Down? Biker Down and it'll get you to. Yeah, it's not just Chester, uh, Cheshire what do them. Um, most most fire, yes. fire yeah. and rescue services do them throughout yeah. the country. Fantastic thing, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I, I think I'll, I'll speak to our guys, the Lemon Drizzle Gang, and we'll yeah you know something that all motorcyclists should do yes it, it yeah. really is yeah, yeah really worthwhile it's, yeah. it's great to be here and see so many bikes as yeah. well it's lovely isn't it yeah all right thank you very much keith you're Cheers. welcome yeah, take care. it's beautiful it's a jewel You have, you have passed your test, haven't you, Dave? 